Hi everyone, this is Debbie with AncestryandTravels.com. I um, wanted to come on today basically and just go through some things that I've been working on this week with a good friend of mine. Um, anytime you're going to go in and do genealogy research, there's always interesting, that, interesting things that you can you can deal with. Um, her situation was th that she had a, uh, a great uncle whose wife, he, she knew the, his name and his wife's name, but she didn't really know who his father was for sure. But it was basically said that his name was um, James Bell and someone else that had put information in there. But we didn't know really for sure which one was hers for sure. So just for fun, I just kind of want to walk you guys all through the steps that we went through. We did not do this. Um, just so you know, we didn't go through this this way. But just to kind of give you an eye of, idea of who he is or what he has to do with anything um this one of the things we did is we went into the 1850 census and we fr found james bell um he's a male he's 79 years old and he was staying in the home of john t bell in monroe now do we know if this is her ancestor not really um but we know that this this James Bell was around the age of the James Bell's Bell that we were looking for. But basically, just to kind of take you step by step. So what I did with her is I said, okay, so we we know that he he was James Bell, and he and it, we had Dauphin, Pennsylvania, as the county. So I said, let's just go in and look at the 1830 census and see, oops, if we find a James Bell that has a son, because the son was supposed to have been born in 1801. Um, so I said, let's just go in and see if we can find a son that would be young enough. So we went in to the 1810 census and we found there were two, two sons. Now, this is something that I always do and that's totally up to you if you want to do that or not. But I always go online and I get myself a copy of the censuses just because it's a lot easier to see what you're looking at. Now, in the very first thing, it had under 10. So it had two sons under the age of 10. So he said, well, yeah, that's, that's, that's a really good chance that that's, that's who we're looking for. Okay. So we went, okay, that's good. And we went through the ages and the father was around and he's four, he was 45 or older. So we thought, okay, yeah, that's, that's a good, he's a good candidate for him. And we looked through the other James Bells that were in the area at the time. And we didn't find another one that fit that criteria. They went into 1810 in Dauphin County again, and we went in and we, I just keep wanting to do that, don't I? Um, then we went in and we fa found James Bell again, and now he has just one son and another son here. Okay, so we went into the 1820 census and in the 1820 census, is one is up to 10 years old. Then the next is 10 to 16 and 16 to 18. So he had, let's look at that census again. He had one f from the ages of up to 10 years old. which He was born in 1809. He would have been, or 1801 in 1810, he would have been. 10 years old, or not quite over 10 years old, but the other son, the one that was the two, would have been older than 10. So this census looks really good as well for being the right census for this James Bell that we're looking, seeking. Well, then we went through and we looked into the um, 
1850 census and we found a junior james bell jr but it wasn't uh the james bell that we were looking for he was too young on the 1850 census and we pretty much decided that he had he um if he was the one that we had found in the 1850 census this one here in monroe um county pennsylvania then um he he would have been a widower if you look at this but we were trying to hopefully find the name of his wife because we had james bell but we didn't have his wife's name but if you look into this census john t pell he's a merchant and this is his wife and james bell age 79 it says he's a gentleman which i thought was kind of cute so anyway yes this could be him or it could not be him we don't know for sure if this is him but it's always wor well worth looking into so we'll go back into the 1790 census which i did as well sorry in the 1790 census and I happen to find quite a few. Um, William Bell, there was a, a William Bell in the 1790 census. So let me kind of explain all that to you. After we weren't really able to find the wife's name or find much out about her, um, his father, James Bell, and his wife, we decided that we were going to go because we knew that um, William Bell the subject that we were looking for married to an Elizabeth Good um, we knew that he had gone to Blair County Pennsylvania so we went into Blair County and we found a book and I don't I don't think I kept a copy of the book but anyway we found a book it was the uh, biographical and and portrait history of Blair County Pennsylvania and we found, if you look at all these, there's a Edward, Elias, G. Thomas, Peter, G. Edward. Um, let's see who else there was. There was James. There was, oh no, sorry, that's not right. Those are censuses. There was Major Francis M. Bell. There was two Martin Bells. One is the grand, this one here is the grandfather of this Martin Bell here. So he was named after his grandfather. But what we did find was a history of William Bell in the book. So this is a lot of fun because we found William Bell who died in August of 1877 and then it talks about it. He was born in Dauphine County and was trained to be a mechanic uh, it doesn't really say anything about his his parents so that was kind of a little bit um, frustrating but one thing that I marked in here you'll see I've got this in yellow the other Martin Bell his mother came from this Reverend Jacob Martin and we hadn't decided as we were going through everything whether um, the other bells that because we found some other bells and they had a little bit difference in their histories whether or not those bells were related well this little clue right here of reverend jacob martin makes me kind of think that probably what happened is they were all in Dauphine county and then they followed this lutheran um, reverend farther west in pennsylvania to blair county that would be my guess though there's a little bit of different stuff in in the um stories of those other people but it's it's something that we're going to have to go through and kind of read all the histories and figure out um what we think about it but you'll notice there's Thomas and George and Robert and there's all these different there's James and there's uh, John Bell these are all names that are used in a lot of these other uh, Bell families families but what the only thing that we had for a son for um, 
William Bell, which was the subject that we were looking for the parents of, uh, was he, we had, she had us two daughters and a son, David. That's the only ones that she had listed for that family. Well, we were really lucky because, well, let me look at that. Let me show you what I was going to show you here because that's a good thing for you to see. First, when we opened up the book, what we found was that there was, sorry, I didn't want that blue, but we'll get it anyway. There's quite a few Bells. There's G. Thomas Bell, William Bell, which was our subject that we were looking for information on. Uh, P.G., Reverend P.G. Bell. Uh, so it was just really interesting to find these different, there was quite a few good histories, which let me tell you, having done genealogy for the last 20 years, to be able to find that many family members in a book and have a history, a biological sketch of those people, this is golden. I wish that I could find this kind of gold on some of my own family members. So this was really quite a golden experience uh, in finding all these people. But we're first going to go into G. Thomas Bell. And I, you can see I've kind of marked his up. He's the ex-sheriff of Blair County. He's the son of William and Elizabeth Good Bell, which was the husband and wife that we were looking at. One of the things I thought that was really interesting was is that Sheriff Bell was William Bell Sr., a native and lifelong resident of Lebanon County. A pater sorry, the Bells are of Scotch-Irish descent, and the paternal grandfather of ex-Sheriff Bell is William Bell Sr. So paternal grandfather was William Bell Sr., Keep that in mind, okay? A native and lifelong resident of Lebanon County. Now, a good point that what we did too is I, I go in and I find um, maps of Pennsylvania so that I can see the counties in 1820 and different times. Because what happens in the beginning uh, stages of a state is they'll have a bigger county and then they make that counter into two or three smaller counties and they were in Dauphin County well part of Dauphin turned into Lebanon County in fact Paxton um, or Paxtang T-A-N-G was what part of the county that turned into Lebanon and that was actually well where I found the bells in Dauphin County so he lived William Bell Sr. was a lifelong resident of Lebanon County. His son, William Bell, the father, okay, so he's saying that William, the father, William, his father is William Bell and was born in 1801. Okay, now we have information from someone else that is saying that he is, um, a son of James Bell. So we're going, okay, now we're confused. Which is it? Okay, then we also go in here and another good piece of information that we found in this uh, biography of this G. Thomas Bell, the son of William Bell, who we're looking for information for. It says that um, Mrs. Bell who is his mother, Elizabeth Good, was a member of the Evangelical Lothan Church, died July 29, 1866, when in her 55th year. So she wasn't, she was born in 1811, so she didn't live very long. She was survived by six children, okay? When I talked to you before, we only had four children, right? Or three children, two daughters and the son, David. Well, now we've got Reverend Peter G. Good, and we've got a sketch for him, and then Captain James M. Good, who was another, or um, James M. Bell, that was another one of his um, children, and then Mrs. E.P. Miller. So we've got the name of the 
daughter's husband, but we'd already have the daughter's name in the in the the family history. And then G. Thomas and Mrs. Lewis Walton of Altoona. So G. Thomas Bell is this one here. So she was able to to glean from just reading this one um, family bio sketch that there was six children. There was David, there's Peter, there's James M, and then this daughter and this daughter, and then Thomas. So that was a good thing to a good find. Then we went in and we found Peter G, which was the other son. Now, an interesting piece about him, okay? He is the son of William and Elizabeth Good Bell and were born was born near Williamsburg in 1835. His paternal grandfather, James Bell. Now, do we remember the other one? Maybe I should just open it so we can look at it again. So, it says that his, his paternal grandfather was William Bell Sr. Okay? But here, in the other son sketch, it says... His paternal grandfather is James Bell. Now, we did find James Bell, and he did have a son around the age of William, what William should have been. So we did find a census record for him. Part of my thought process is, okay, did um, William Sr., I did find some, some different records for him. I found um, in the 1790 census, if I can get this to open for me, let's go ahead and make this bigger. I was able to find some the bells, and like I said, in Paxton Township. But look at here, we've got John Bell, James Bell, John Bell. George Bell. Okay, there's not a William Bell in here. And, and this is in 1780 or seven, the 1790 census. So I'm not seeing a John or a William Bell that would have been the, the father of William Bell Jr. So that kind of that kind of makes me think. Okay, yeah, most likely, um, James Bell. Okay, he doesn't have any sons right now. He has, um, I believe it's two. Dot, let's open up the seventeen ninety. Sorry, let's go ahead and look at the seventeen ninety census. So in the first line, he's saying that he, he there's him. There's no sons. 16 or older. Then he says that there's a son. Let's see here. Where's my little picture? Right here. But then he's saying there's a son, one son under the age of 16. This is in 1790. Okay, so our William that we're thinking of was not born then. But it's saying, oops, hang on, sorry about that. But actually, two sons under the age of 16. And then uh, probably his wife and, and a daughter here. So, he's just starting a family, it looks like, right here. So, it could very well be that this is his, his father. But we don't know that for positive. So then, again, it's just kind of speculation at this point that, that, that this, is, this is for sure the father. So we've got one son saying it's William Bell and the other son saying it's James. So we really kind of muddied up the water there. But if we went into the other Bell... Um, sketches they all said that they came from a john bell 
who came over earlier, they didn't necessarily say that he came over in um, the timing that James did, or William did, or James for that matter. But if James was the son of, of Thomas, then, or for John, then that would make a lot of sense because they were saying that there's, I think it was an Edward Bell. Let me try to remember. I'm pretty sure it was Edward Bell wrote some of that history. So basically, folks, what I'm telling you is, is that you have to read the sources and figure this stuff out. But the resources are there if you'll go and look for it. And what I did is I took and I downloaded the whole PDF book, and then I went through to the pages that I wanted. And then you can print off PDFs onto your computer. So I printed each each bio um, in its own PDF so that I could easily get to them. And have each page and the book that I had it had like a, a page and then there was a blank page and then next the next page and then a blank page so to make it easier I just printed each page separately but it says it was founded by John Bell who was born in Scotland in 1733 so when you think about it, this could have been the first bell. This John Bell could have been the first bell. Going to that 1790 census that I found, it's very easy to believe that there was most likely a John Bell involved in this family because we did have John Bell in that county at that time. What I'm going to need to do or what we're going to need to do on our research is we're going to need to go into the 1810-1830 censuses and try to find John Bell and find out what his ages were in the censuses. Let me just show you a little bit about the, the census records. So if we go to the 1790, all it's going to tell you is it's a female of 16 years or older or 16 years and younger and whether they're females. They don't give you any ages whatsoever in the 1790 census. The 1810 census is a little bit better because they give you a little bit more information. They give you t under 10, 10 through 15, 16 through 25, 26 through 44, and 45 and older. Um, and same with the females. When you get into the 1820 census, they give you a little bit more even still. They give you a little bit um, more breakdown. But they're still only going to go up to the, the 45. Then in the 1830 census, I knew I had this open for a reason. If you look at it, it goes under 5, 5 to 10. 10 to 15, but it goes clear up to 100 years. So if I could find that that John Bell, but I think they said that he died in 1833. So he, he would still be in the 1830 census, so that would be good. But that's just some clues of what you can do, how you can find um, people and figure out who their, who their um, parents and grandparents are. You should just go through the censuses, and you're going to look for men that are of the right age, that had sons that were of the right age, and just kind of break it down. And you just want to start with the, the earliest census and just keep working your way up through the censuses. These are all in Dauphin County, which it, it the one said that he died in 1833 in, in, um, in Dauphin County, so in Lebanon. So we know that... Um, he was still alive in the 1830 census, and hopefully we can get his age off of that census. Um, and he may not be the head of house. He may be um, just living with the head of house. So it may not be under John. It may be under a different, like a son's name. But then the age would be, you know, in the 70s and stuff. So you could tell by that. So it's just really a process of elimination and a process of taking what, information you have available and being able to piece that puzzle of that family together.
but the fact that I found the 1790 census and it had so many bells in it um, that were of the of the ages or the names of the men that were also in in um, Blair County just leads me to believe that very much so um, they're in the same area. I did find Williams William. I did find a William in in uh, actually on a different page than the rest of the family. Now that I remember, it was almost like he was an afterthought in that census. But William Bell, he's got one him over sixteen, two under sixteen. So again. Remember, we saw James, and he had pretty much the same thing. So that really gives you still a conundrum as to <laughs> which one is the right name for the grandfather. And it's just a matter of trying to find more information, more things that will point you in the right direction as to who is who. Is who and um, figure out for sure who uh, his 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 uh, father is because both sons having different names and it really did not help but again when I went through the other um, Bell biographies from Blair County it named a John um, so there's just some things you can go there you can kind of stretch things out see if how it all fits together also another thing too is that you could go into Lebanon County and see if there's a sketch on on the older John Bell that gives you a little bit more information but you've got John Bell right here too him and then four women in his household so this could very well be the John Bell that we're searching for so there's a lot of different things that you can do a lot of different things that you can learn in trying to research your family but it's 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 it takes a lot of work. I'm not going to lie to you. It takes a lot of work. But if you're willing to put in the time and you're willing to research, you will find that you will find a lot of really good information on your ancestors. And it's very rewarding when you find that information. It'll be interesting to find out if this James Bell is the, the, the father of William Bell. There's just a lot of good fun things to find, folks. There's lots of history there. There's lots of mysteries. On to the next mystery. I hope this uh, tutorial helped. If you like it, please like it on, on my channel. And then um, even leave me a message if you want to about something else you might want me to go through and research and kind of give you ideas how to do it. Hopefully this gave you an idea of how to go out and search your family and find when you don't have the answers ways that you can find the answers because that's what makes it exciting is when you start finding those pieces of the of the puzzle puzzle hope you have a great day thank you again for watching this is debbie with ancestry and travels i hope you have a wonderful day thank you